I made a miniature portal turret. So what does it do? Well, I used my Cube 3 3D printer to print up the body of it, and I put an Arduino inside of it to run the LED in the eye. In the eye there is also a light sensor, and that I will use as a segue into design compromises that I made. I guess a proper way to do motion detection is using one of these infrared motion detection sensors. However, if you look, it looks nothing like the eye of the turret is supposed to, and it's pretty large. So if I was to integrate the sensor even without its lens, so let's pop the lens off and see what the sensor looks like. It's far too large to fit inside and still have the turret look um, correct. And so I chose not to use that kind of a sensor in spite of the fact that it would give it much greater functionality. Because of that, for the most part, passing in front of the sensor doesn't do anything. However, if you change the lighting in front of the sensor, it does respond. And so another compromise that I had to make was with the positioning of the legs. If you're familiar with the video game Portal at all, you'll know that the legs typically sit, I think a tad wider than this. They loop from the back. All three legs are connected kind of in the back portion. And they loop down and come outside of the door. However, that makes it much more difficult for the door to move in and out. It also makes it more difficult to have the legs be sturdy because I 3D printed the legs. They're kind of um, delicate, I guess. Another compromise that I made was, well, while I was preparing this, I was sanding, painting, sanding, painting, and I just decided to leave it in uh, the color that I had laying around. And so it turned out okay like that instead of the white. I changed the shape of the rear leg elbow. Um, when I drew this up, I simply made an ellipsoid with the dimensions. I found some blueprints of what the portal turret looks like online, and I took the dimensions for the two diameters, and I made my ellipsoid fit those two as well as this one, the height dimension. And then to create the elbows, when I was doing the slicing based on the kind of angles for the doors, at the bottom I just took what was left over, cut them into the three pieces for the legs. And because I had cut the slot that passes around the entire thing first, I left that in the rear elbow joint. The neat thing is then that the three elbow joints perfectly make up the bottom portion of the turret. Another compromise that had to be made, as you can see based on the cable going to the wall, is I couldn't fit power inside of it. I chose the size of the turret because I didn't want to use up all of my filament and because I have a six inch cube print bed um, already I had to make cuts. Each of the doors is two pieces and then the body is split right here. If I had made it any larger to fit more electronics inside and the power pack, uh, probably it would be a much more interesting package, but for now it remains kind of a miniature model turret. Let's see what other compromises had to be made. Well, as you can see, the doors are not fully closed. That's not because they won't fully close, it's because the servo inside doesn't have enough torque to fully close them, so I want to show you what this guy is doing. Inside of there, I have an accelerometer, an Arduino, a wave shield from Adafruit, and um, a speaker. So, when you pass in front of it, change the lighting, it opens up. And it speaks. And fires. If it doesn't find anything, it stops firing, searches, and finally closes. Um, so that's a micro servo in there, and it doesn't quite have enough torque to pull the guy fully closed. And so it does fully close if I pinch it shut. And in that case, it looks quite nice. Um, but it won't get there with the servo, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that. 
uh, some other design compromises, I guess. Because I wanted a simple mechanism for the doors to move in and out, I sacrificed the ability to have the doors move separately and also to have the two doors move together to twist and aim the gun like an actual turret would do. Um, but as it is, I think I'm satisfied for it just being something that'll sit in my room. So let's get it to open again. Oh, it saw me get in front of it. Is anyone there? So you can see the speaker up there. Is anyone there? The door mechanism kind of in there. And so what am I doing with the accelerometer? Well, currently I have uh, 50 different wave files that I found on a portal wiki page online. Um, I have ones for activation which are randomly selected. I have ones for uh, the shooting one is a single sound but it gets re re played over. The searching and retiring have a few to choose from and so those are the ones that you've heard so far apart from when I was touching it when you could hear um, the accelerometer activates the robot thinking it's being tipped so it plays the being destroyed, the fizzled sound or one of the tipping over sounds followed by the turret being disabled sound. So let me uh, play that. And then finally when you write it, stand it back up, it will play the one of the sounds as if it was either being picked up or launched because I like the ones when it gets launched. So, so there it is on its side. I don't quite have the legs directly attached, they just fit into peg holes on the bottom, which I guess probably the lighting isn't quite right for you to be able to see. I made a pass-through for the wiring to come out the bottom. I was originally going to have the USB cable come out so that I could program it or power it through the Arduino's USB port, but um, there's not enough space in there. Oh, and the power came undone, so uh, I guess you don't get to hear it doing the standing back up sound. So let me... Uh, Pause the video for a minute, get it reinitialized, and then let you hear that. So it's initialized again. Let's tip it back over. And so there it is.